November of 1558, Bloody Mary Tudor died, and Elizabeth I succeeded the throne. Elizabeth asked Dee personally to choose her coronation date, which she selected as January 15, 1559. Later that year, Leonard Diggs, the inventor of the telescope, died and passes wardenship of his son, Thomas, to Dr. Dee. In 1562, in Antwerp, John Dee met with William Silvius, a printer, and in 1563, Dee traveled to Urbino and Rome. In 1564, Dee met proto family of love cultists in Hungary. Johann Rodermacher recommended him a book in the shop of Arnold Berkman. This book was Stenographia in three volumes, written in 1499 and blacklisted from 1609. The third volume was not published until 1606, and later used as the cipher manuscripts by the Golden Dawn. The book described cryptographic depiction using spirits to communicate over very long distances, and was by Abbe Johann Trithemius, 1462-1516, who was the teacher of both Henry Cornelius Agrippa and Paracelsus. Immediately after reading Steganographia, John Dee wrote the Monus Hieroglyphica and dedicated it to the newly coronated Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian II, a Habsburg. The Monus was written in Antwerp and took 13 days to write from January 13th to the 24th, and it was published by Silvius in March of 1564. At that time, John Dee was 37 years old, the same age as Maximilian II, and it was in that July that Maximilian II, 1527 to 1576, was made the King of Hungary, Bohemia, and the Holy Roman Empire. In 1565, Dee returned to London, and in 1566 he obtained the rectorship of Long Leadenham in Lincolnshire. In that year, he moved to Mortlake with his mother Jane and began his library of 3,000 plus scrolls and 1,000 plus bound books. 1567, Dee took copious notes on Vitruvius de Architectura and Roger Cook became John Dee's apprentice. In 1568, Dee published Propadumatica Aphoristica dedicated to Elizabeth I and began math lessons for Elizabeth. In 1570, Dee published the preface to Lord Mayor of London Henry Billingsley's edition of Euclid, in which Dee mentions his smoking mirror of Tezcatlipoca. Later in that year, Dee was sent to the Duchy of Lorraine by Elizabeth I, and in 1571 returned, however was ill. He was treated by Elizabeth I's own doctors, Astlow and Balthrop, the following year, 1572, Tycho Brahe observed a supernova, and Isaac Luria died. In 1573, Nicholas Barnard, 1538-1604, of Huguenot, France, advocated tyrannicide, the killing of a king. The following year, 1574, John Dee married his first wife, who, however, in 1575, died. The day of his wife's death, Elizabeth I visited John Dee at Mortlake. However, she said she won't come in with death in the house, and instead of his vast library, only examined John Dee's smoking mirror in a nearby field. In 1576, Thomas Diggs, John Dee's ward, published a new edition of his father's perpetual almanac called Prognostication Everlasting including an appendix about then-new Copernican heliocentrism. In 1577, January, John Dee was visited at Moore Lake by Robert Dudley, William Sidney, who was then treasurer, and Edward Dyer, the alchemist. 
and in March, Abraham Ortelius, the Dutch cartographer of Spain. In August, Dee published the General and Rare Memorials Pertaining to the Perfect Art of Navigation for the Muscovy Company, and also made a catalog of maps used to study by the Gilberts, Davis, Hawkins, Frobisher, etc., and coined the term British Empire. In 1578, John Dee married Jane Fremont, a 23-year-old lady-in-waiting of Lady Howard of Effingham. In September, Elizabeth I fell ill, and in November, Dudley and Walsingham sent Dee to Berlin to fetch a Dr. Turnifer. In 1579, from June 15th to October 31st, Dee's mother left him Mortlake, and on July 13th, his first son of eight children was born, Arthur Dee, and his wife, Jane Fremont's father, died. In 1580, October the 10th, came the death of John Dee's mother, Jane, and brought another visit from Elizabeth I. During that year, Dee was making maps of Atlantis, Roger Bacon's name for America, and in the following year of 1581, on June 7th, John Dee's first daughter was born, named Catherine Dee. That year, Roger Cook, who had been an apprentice to Dee for 14 years, quit due to jealousy, although he would return as Dee's secretary from 1605 to 1609 when Dee was old and dying at Mortlake. In 1582, Dee worked briefly with Scryer Barnabas Saul, and two days later would meet Edward Kelly. 